I'm here today with uh, the wonderful and the very famous and also very humble uh, Sasha Stone. He's well known for his uh, great humanitarian work, uh, but I'll let you, Sasha, to introduce yourself and give us a little bit of background um, and then we'll get started. Thank you, Bass. Um, nice, nice to see you again. Um, the, the essential focus of my work has is, is been in uh, citizen diplomacy, uh, which also moved into um, a measure of intergovernmental uh, diplomacy, which I was doing through for the last 20 odd years uh, through Humanitad uh, Foundation, which is uh, humanitad.org, anyone who's interested in that uh, stuff. Uh, that is also um, morphed into establishing uh, the New Earth Project or the New Earth Nation, which we launched about seven, uh, eight years ago, um, and is having a beautiful, bold, uh, Regenesis launch in January, which includes uh, Australia, pr a prospect in Australia and elsewhere around the world. And New Earth Project is focused on sovereign and conscious community development um, and the dispensation of um, natural uh, law, which moves me on to the third uh, organization which I founded, which is the International uh, Tribunal for Natural Justice, the ITNJ.org. Uh, and that is a, a court which was uh, ratified a number of years ago in 2015 in Westminster, London, uh, and has conducted um, a couple of um, seminal and landmark judicial commissions of inquiry since, one into human trafficking and child uh, sex abuse, uh, the second one into weaponization, which we launched in Westminster in 2018, uh, and then the uh, judicial commission of inquiry into weaponization of the biosphere, which we launched um, last year um, in Indonesia, um, with seminal figures from around the world flying in, religious leaders and, uh, and uh, um, uh, academic figures and health and, uh, health and uh, um, uh, medical professionals, because weaponization of the biosphere, as we now know, has become the single biggest uh, narrative on uh, the face of the earth with this absurd uh, corona pantomime. So we've also morphed that judicial commission of inquiry into weaponization of the biosphere into a uh, another a series of hearings and seatings connected to COVID and Corona. Um, we also launched last year the World Health Sovereignty Summit, uh, and that had its second staging this year with a five-hour marathon uh, broadcast, uh, which we launched uh, called uh, The Line in the Sand, uh, with the figures like Robert Kennedy, Del Bigtree, G. Edward Griffin, Professor Dolores Cahill, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, Dr. Rashid Buttar, um, uh, Professor um, uh, uh, Dr. Judy Mikovits, uh, all the seminal, most of the seminal figures in the whole uh, Corona COVID disclosure, exposure um, uh, fraternity. So we've taken pretty much center stage in helping to galvanize the focus of people of the world toward the, the great deception. And of course, with what's happening in in the the United States uh, right now, that geopolitical uh, alchemy that's playing out is reflective of the entire planetary dialectic, um, which is all connected to a clash of civilizations, a clash of dimensions and paradigms, and it's beautiful because what emerges through all of that is a return to natural law, natural justice, and pure truth. That's amazing and it's so impressive and it's an absolute honour to be here with you speaking um, on this topic right now. It is very interesting times because um, I personally was expecting a different um, uh, outcome right now or I know there there is no result as yet for the US elections. Where do you think this is heading just uh, as it's topical? Um, I, I'm fairly certain in my own mind that it is what I, I've su suggested it would be from the get-go, which is a landslide victory uh, for Trump, which is to say for reason and sanity and restoration of uh, reason and sanity um, and a demolition of the so-called deep state, which is the Sabbatean, satanic, luciferic uh, generational agenda that underpins our mutant civilizational wheel. Um, and, and I think that what's playing out right now is a landslide um, victory for Trump um, dressed up by the um, witchcraft of mainstream media and the and the uh, wicked uh, machinations of the Democratic Party in the United States, which is also um, for anyone who's, who's done the work as I have for two decades, you learn 
uh, quite keenly about how evil that deep state is and how its apparatus uh, permeates all levels of society, principally in the United States at the moment. It needs to be said that's the kind of battleground zero for the world. Um, but the the deception right now today of oh Biden's uh, it's a Biden victory is an insane proposition. No, it's a Biden um, uh, uh, um, calamity. It's a it's an epic epochal fraud. The 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 biggest um, uh, engineered uh, fraud in the history of our world, almost certainly. But that's all also axiomatic of where we're at as a species. Uh, will Trump be flushed out of the Oval Office? Absolutely not. Has he baited the so-called Democratic Party into this? Uh, yes, in my view, that's been set up. And I believe between the uh, 14th and 17th of December, that's my prognostication, we'll see the real uh, play out occurring. And that'll move into January. There's going to be tremendous uh, civil disturbance and civil unrest, all of which has been pre-planned and, and engineered. Um, Trump will almost certainly uh, be back in office to continue his second term as the legitimate um, a president of the United States of America, but I also believe that he's going to restore it to the constitutional republic, which is what it uh, should have been all along. Uh, had the Sabbatean uh, satanic, again, to use that very, very uh, appropriate uh, moniker, satanic in the truest sense of the word, as in blood cultism. Uh, I'm not trying to use words for sensationism. I'm using them because of their etymological perfection. Um, this, these are satanic times. We are, move, we are working our way uh, through the gravest uh, spiritual uh, battle that we've ever uh, met with on this planet. And it's, it's all perfect, uh, Bass. It's all perfect. I see the outcome um, being uh, the separation, the bifurcation of the wheat from the chaff, of the reason from the, from the sane from the insane, the masked from the unmasked, the, uh, um, the, the insoled from the uninsoled. And that's really what we're going to be living through in the coming uh, months and years in any event between now and 2030, almost certainly. Uh, we've got a, a whole renaissance taking place at the psycho-spiritual, psycho-civilizational level. And then we're marching straight towards so-called ascension, uh, which is a scientific, um, uh, measurable event horizon that we're moving into. All of that, incidentally, is connected into the work that we do in my organizations, which is connected to science, technology, innovation, sp uh, spirituality and consciousness and restoration of natural law, the fractality of nature. It never lets us down. I love that. And and I would love to know more about your amazing organization and, and what uh, we can do more of here in Australia to support your organization, um, because I think it's an essential thing. Natural law sounds like something that we've been missing for some time. It was probably taken out with tribal um, sort of uh, connections and, and all the things that we had that, that the tribe just knew. Um, it seems like the ancient civilizations, when we look at the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Greeks um, and all the other ancients, just had something that our civilization today is missing. And Well, we carry it in our codons. We carry it in our DNA and RNA story. We haven't lost it. Yeah, oh, definitely. It's by no means lost. I'm sure it's sacred and it's within us and within the land. Um, it's just more lost from, I think, being talked about or being practiced or or being educated because it's not within our education system. It's certainly not within our healthcare system. Um, it's definitely not something we'll find in our political system. Um, and so we, we need the, the work that you're doing. And um, and while I'm on the political system side of things, I think there is a few of us here in Australia that have decided that the days of the political institutionalized where people are doing it as if it's a family business or they're doing it uh, with, with the interest of self rather than the interest of the many um, are numbered. And the future of politics is honest, decent people that are doing it from a place of leadership, a place of this isn't about me. This is about us. And how can we help more people? And so the Health Australia Party, which I'm part of, um, and interesting enough, they've, they've made an announcement today, just a few hours, that I'll be running in the next state elections here. So I'm entering into a, a new realm for me. Um, well, new 
potentially in this lifetime. I don't know, maybe in, in other times I've, I've probably been there and done that um, and I'm not counting that out. Um, so, th so there's a part of me that's really interested and eager. And there's a part of me that wants to get into Parliament House and, and grab some heads and bang them together and say, why have you been doing this? Producing these um, bullshit, really, laws that, are, that have not helped anybody except the people that have run them um, for their own agenda. Um, obviously, uh, that is <laughs> figurative speech. I'm, I'm not planning to go in there and smash anybody's head, but um, I'd like to. I mean, there's uh, there's a part in every Australian, I think, that needs to be more passionate. I've heard you say this in other interviews, that people are more passionate about the football than, uh, than about what's going on, the state of affairs of Australia. And people need to just find that, that, um, that part in them that's real and say enough's enough. How long are we going to let people run our lives and run our country for that, uh, that are not looking out for our best interest? Or what are your thoughts? How can we draw on your organization? How could, how could we do more work to, to wake people um, up in that way and fire them up? I'm not um, I'm promoting an organization here. So to be clear, um, my organization is here to support Australians and people of the world. L living men and women of the living soil is my is my concern and my consideration. I, I, I don't give a fuck about, excuse my language, but I, I mean that in the true sense of the word. I don't give a fuck about fictions or about governments or about statutes or about the, the deceptions of government, the deceptions of uh, the rigged executive branches of government, the uh, legislative and, and uh, judicial branches of government are all corrupted absolutely alpha omega all the way through there is no point in having a polite conversation about a uh, politics in the year 2020 it is rotten to the goddamned core so regenesis and absolute um, a dissolution of the extant framework of governance is what is absolutely necessary the only way that can happen is when there is a regenesis and a restoration of the dignity of the common pulse of humanity and that is to do with when people themselves awaken within the dream spell and the cult programming that has occurred that they have permissioned that they have paid, paid coin to caesar to finance the apparatus that entraps them so you know, getting a new political party in is good as a transitional piece. The fact that you are going to be um, moving into those corridors is incredibly good news to someone like me, who's been doing a lot of political and diplomatic work for a long, long time. I've been on multiple occasions a presidential and prime ministerial advisor. I've worked as a director general in the United Nations intergovernmental sector. I have launched multiple uh, multilateral initiatives and been involved at that level of work. And I do that to this day. So I understand how to last last uh, year, last summer, we had 26 kings and sultans and rajas at our New Earth Festival here as part of a cultural regenesis. We, I work with international leadership. I'm comfortable working with good leadership. Um, I am deeply uncomfortable working for satanic and luciferic systems of control, manipulation, supremacy, and dominion. And that's what government is today. The government, which is to say the govern control meant mind, the mind control technology of government, which is cult programming, that is the corporation of Australia today is about as uh, wicked and, and corrupted as you can get. The same stands with uh, New Zealand, Canada, United Kingdom, and the United States of America, principally leading the world into the, corpor the corporations masquerading as governments. It's a fiction. It's all part of a grand and grotesque fiction of systems, numbers, profit, usury, control that have taken over the living men and women of the living soil and their God-given right to be connected to that living soil, to go about unmolested on the surface of the earth conducting free and open commerce and exchange causing no harm loss or injury to other living souls so that's the work i do um and that's the that's what people of australia can do to help themselves i don't need help my organization doesn't need help you guys really do need help and you really need to help yourselves and that's my message to enlightened australians because whoever amongst you listen to this broadcast and resonate to the frequency or the attunement of that which self exists and self reveals as pure truth 
which is sane, rational logic. That's all I'm speaking to. None of what I'm speaking to is hyperbole or sensationalism or conspiracy. It is all rooted in fundamental natural law and rule of law in point of fact. You see, your government is not only corrupt, it is illegal under its own rules of engagement. It is illegal, unconstitutional, immoral, unlawful. And what are we to do as a people, sons and daughters of God? What are we to do as, and I'm talking about the aboriginals, the first nation peoples, and the, the, uh, the, 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 new, the, the new founders. All, all of this confluence of people in Australia. What are you to do to reclaim your lives from the jaws of fiction? of usury, of exploitation. And now you're on the brink of being hustled into uh, 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 camps. That is happening in, in across the water in New Zealand with that grotesquery, uh, Jacinda, uh, uh, whatever her name is. That is going to be franchised back to Australia at the, at the rate uh, your government is going. So it's what Australians can do for Australia and for themselves and their families. And that is to awaken within the dream spell, Bass. That is to recognize the fiction of your life and to say, I am no longer going to acquiesce. I'm no longer going to obey. And I'm certainly no longer going to pay coin, which is taxes, into this enslavement system. I am going to withhold my conscience, my life force, my time and my motion, my resources, I'm going to withhold that participation until or unless I get governance in place that is serving the living over the dead. And so it's really about, I'm flipping the script, of course, it's all about what Australians can do for Australians. I totally agree. And, and I, I love what you're saying here because it's not about waiting or looking for someone to save anybody. People need to get up and save themselves and stop waiting for a savior. Um, I totally agree with that. And I totally agree with, uh, discernment, uh, connecting and sensing from within what feels right, what feels, it's not about who I like or dislike, it's about what feels right, right and real and what feels true and what doesn't. And, 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 and I think it's time for that because a lot of people have been operating under this, I like this, I dislike that for a long time about the current political parties, which is the red and blue, I call them. Um, but I, I think they both play for the same puppeteer master um you know to say the truth and and no wonder why my discernment when i used to go to elections as as a young person going into vote i used to say who am i going for it's like i'm picking the lesser evil of the two parties um and and you know even someone that came in which was a minority party at, at the time the greens have sided up with one of these red and blue, right? So now you don't know if you're voting for the Greens and you'll get the Greens or you'll get Labour. Um, so it, it, for me, it's about now looking at minority parties like Health Australia Party that are coming Absolutely. in to change things up. And, they, you know, they don't accept donations from corporations. They, they want to be transparent. They want honesty. And if we look at these policies, that that's what Australians need to be doing now. Um, they don't have to, not all Australians have to get involved in politics, but they can definitely take some interest and learn because I think the political landscape has been confusing for so long. It's like a different language and people don't understand it. Um, and so as I'm entering into this realm, I'm having to do the research and, and care and study more uh, what it means uh, rather than where I used to be, which was you know what, if, if everything turns pear-shaped, I'm going to take my family and go live somewhere else. But yeah. it, being a leader, it now makes me look at not just my family, as in my wife and kids and my parents and siblings. And it's what about my Australian family? What about my larger community? What about helping more people? And that's why I'm interested in this landscape now. It's more about leadership. What can, what can we do? Because the leadership is definitely struggling. Um, People aren't taking accountability. People are not standing up and saying, we've made some bad calls here and we, you know, let's, let's take ownership of this. That's not happening. And, and I think it needs to happen. It's essential if it's going to be real and if it's going to be following the laws of, like you say, natural laws, somebody needs to say, we've made some really bad decisions here and we really need to fix that. And I don't count on that happening from the current people in government uh, because they're too institutionalized. 
Well, I don't know how you can fix something that was broken uh, at the outset. I mean, democracy is a vile um, and highly dystopian, uh, dysfunctional. Um, an entropic model, which was uh, installed as a software program by the invisible mastery, which is the old Babylonian priesthoods that became uh, the progenitors of um, the imperial hegemony of the crowns of Europe, which moved in and uh, through the Catholic Church, of course, and all the way through uh, to the formation of states, nation states, and then the governments, uh, which, which uh, emerged resultantly. But the point I'm making is that the democracy is issued from Democritus from ancient Greece and was all part of a source coding. But don't forget the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans uh, particularly were masters at war, masters of manipulation and control. And um, there's a reason why those halcyon days of ancient Greece didn't survive. Had that been a perfected social and cultural and civilizational model, it would have gone on to prosper. It didn't, it died. It became the, the Roman uh, empire, which was fettered I mean, absolutely, you know, brimming with blood cultism and with with intrigue and with uh, with uh, with all the horrors that come with uh, the Caesars uh, came with the Caesars of Rome. And that, of course, marched on to become, you know, weaponized Christianity in 325 with the Council of Nicaea and marched on to become the Vatican complex that established the military um, might in Washington, D.C. today, and all of the deceptions that issue through the um, 1,000 U.S. military bases around the world, which are all uh, lily pads for child trafficking, gun running, and drug running, and uh, human trafficking, and um, all the evils of the world. Uh, Rouge factions within the mil military in Australia are deeply embedded with the Rouge factions in Canada, England, France, Germany, all around the world. The in intelligence infrastructure of which your country, Australia, uh, forms one of the five uh, essential pillars uh, of the five eyes establishment. Uh, Australia is one of the five evil pillars of five eyes, which is the root of all global surveillance, metadata control, and, and treason and sedition of systems against people. So all of that witchery um, goes back to the same uh, issue uh, coming out of Democritus or democracy. So let's not kid ourselves that any software program installed in the Australian parliament is going to serve living souls. It does not because it cannot because it was designed to never do thus. Get that and then begin the process as a political leader of, of, of systemically and consciously, not just reverse engineering, the 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 apocalyptic model of government but actually usher it into its natural dissolution and allow the good people of the soil of australia hand in glove i'm talking about the the the, the first nation peoples here the true wisdom keepers must be the progenitors of the new treaties the new covenants the new compacts they must be the source code of it why i don't even need to tell you why because they were bludgeoned and butchered and culled and massacred and genocided into almost extinction. We know about the story there. And we also know about how it is that the evil Luciferic elements within the Vatican complex that ultimately own and control Australia, the corporation through the Commonwealth and back to the Vatican, black to the black papacy and so on. We understand how all of that works, how the indentureship of all of the living souls of Australia into registered birth certificates is part of a collateral owned by the beast okay which is the crown of england in this case and the so-called common wealth i don't think there's any wealth there at all the point i'm making is that's all a rotten infrastructure it needs to be ushered into dissolution by conscious souls like yourself who are the true leaders at the vanguard of a paradigmatic shift in this thing called governance and then once the wisdom flame of the first nation peoples the elders is the uh, and the tribal the, the tribal uh, elders is brought back into the frame then you've got a reconstitution of all of the 
wonderful advancements uh, social cultural innovation science technological um in academia all the wonderful advancements made by the the broad people of australia hand in glove with the the, the dream the dream the dreaming and the song lines uh, and the dream timing of your true uh, first nation peoples now you're going to have regenesis happening then it's about the whole of australia falling into auto determination self determination zero point economy the eradication of all profiteering and usury the 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 amplification of 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 millions of souls moving freely and unmolested in perfect centropic harmony with each other only focusing on the elevation of art beauty and consciousness in their lives and the lives of their families and the lives of their communities that is right in front of us that is right here it is just behind the hermetic veil if we have the courage to own the deceptions that we are permissioning to hold us back from that uh, new earth so that's really what it all comes back down to is you and me here in the now like i said to you earlier i have sp i have met with many hundreds of kings and queens presidents prime ministers ambassadors ministers plenipotentiaries permanent representatives leadership hundreds many hundreds around the world over 21 years nearly 22 years and before that in point of fact and i can tell you the one thing i've learned is that there is a common pulse of sheer goodness coursing through leadership coursing through the military coursing through good police coursing through good technocrats and bureaucrats god forgive them for the jobs they do and good humans of the soil living men and women of the living soil when we come together and reconvene and, and reconstitute our true relationship the adam the human relationship one to another by exchanging fire in the eyes by me never allowing statutes or codes or rules or regulations to allow me as the policeman or me as the clerk of the court or me as the functionary of the technocracy i will never allow myself and my conscience to be overridden by the rules and regulations that i'm required to do to serve uh, the rule book of the state the government the municipality you see it's going to come down to that class of of servant that servant class that hide behind the uniform the costume the seal or the badge of office when those individuals uh, come together and remember their human humanity and exchange fire in the eyes with the people of the soil it's over there is no longer any invisible mastery all that evil witchery of engineered wars and and conducting treaties with extraterrestrials uh, or, you know, off the radar and and bringing about these holocausts and cyclical armageddons all of that becomes a distant memory of the old fallen light of atlantis which is what actually we're awakening through right now for the first time in our history yeah i love that i, mean, I love what you've just said and uh so much so that i was actually able to see um the vision that you've just described i i've, I've seen it i'm seeing it right now the the natural dissolution of of what we have here which is a rotten system and and the rebirth of a, a natural law and and i totally agree it needs to have the hand in glove as you described of the originators or the original people of the land um, and their blessings um i can see that and and i can definitely in my heart welcome that because that's exactly what needs to happen i think for the people that may not quite understand some of the things that you described i know that i was one of those people maybe not that long ago very naive thinking that i trust my government they're out to do the best for me and um, and for my family all they need to do is do some little research and find that the government's actually on the new york stock exchange they're on how how is that even possible they're they're you know, it is a corporate entity, as you're describing. Even the ATO is on there, which is the Australian Taxation Office. And so if people start looking at these things for themselves and realize that the things that they've been told are conspiracies and nothing yeah. more than truth, and they just need well, to... Do the research. Let, let's, let's look at that, Bass, quickly, because um, in the first instance, you don't even need to do the research. You need to shut your eyes, unplug from the television screens and the, um, cons the conspiring um, and satanic associated news core. You need to step away absolutely from the cult programming that you are permissioning 
in your own life and that that will reconstitute your own natural psionic intelligence and the capacity to do the divinations of logic and you start to then start tapping into the gut instinct the gut intelligence is that what then leads you toward uh, pure truth uh, quicker than any research is going to lead you i can tell you that much for nothing because research and researchers have become very much a part of the counter problem um because what define research a uh, reading reading blogs out there that are written by um, CIA operatives in order to uh, debunk um, conspiracies and so on. I mean, it's 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 truth, mistruth, um, deception, counter deception, and it, it just doesn't it doesn't end. So one needs to tap into the psionic intelligence and the gut instinct more than anything else as the essential navigation um, a tool to be able to divine your way through that you know all this insanity but the fact of the matter is that everything that i've said and spoken to um i'm, I'm happy to speak as you know i can lecture on the stuff i mean you can take any part of what i've said which sounds sensationalist and we could drill it down look at it and then really slowly extrapolate and move into it i would actually welcome doing a series of conversations that actually does that okay. so for instance feedback that comes in from this uh this conversation this interview um and anyone sending submitting intelligible questions um uh, we could take those forward and, and and table a dozen of them in the next conversation and then really keep 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 drilling into it simply put if if people understand all the people listening to this this interview understand that they don't own their own home Number one, you do not own the car that you've registered to the state either. You do not own your farm. You do not own your children or yourself. You are a trust. You're a fiction. So you're a black block cap block black capital letters on a form. Okay, that's what you are, Mister Sasha Stone. All block black capitals, uppercase, written into those forms that you're constantly being invited to fill out. That's because that then moves into confluence with your trust, which is held by the government. So all those uh, chits, those receipts, those forms, those applications that you're filling in for passports or at the post office or the tax returns or the whatever, or the registration deeds and the, all, all of that stuff, mortgages and debts, banks, all of that stuff goes back to central command which is your birth trust that was issued to you the day you were registered to the state as a newborn once your certificate of live birth was then flipped a few days or weeks later into a registration birth registration certificate so all of that's part of an invisible uh, control system that you're never told about never taught about you're never supposed to know about that because you also get allocated at birth uh, a, 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 a value on the bond, your birth bond, which is a, a minuscule value of the Commonwealth of your country. And the, your bond is then traded on the stock market for the rest of your life without you ever knowing it. Why? Because it's none of your business, because they own you. They own the trust. You're the ones who offered your flesh and bones or the flesh and bones of your baby at birth by registering your child to the crown, to the state. You offered it up to them. You literally signed it away and you entered the false compact the luciferic false light contract is the birth registration certificate which is an indentureship certificate and that then follows through all the way through school through your jobs through your employment through your taxing and all that stuff you are constantly agreeing uh, and tacitly accepting and agreeing and signing the contracts all the way along and if you get fined by the government or by the police they're happy just to get you into a courtroom no matter how they do it because even if you're a bum on the street and they can't get any coin out of you they'll still make a penalty against you and then discharge that money against your birth bond which they can get into because they'll have access to it through the back door so they're making money every time they're penalizing you and me anyway they're double dipping and the banks are the very worst they're the most serpentine because they're the ones that are lending you money for a mortgage or for a, a credit card or for a bank loan. But it's money that they're discharging against your birth bond. So they're double dipping by lending you your own money from your own birth bond and then making you pay that back to them plus interest. That's called double dipping. It's also called sedition and treason by your government in collusion with the banks. Now, when that becomes common knowledge, good luck. Good luck, Babylon. Let's see how long you stand. Because I know what the common pulse of humanity is capable of when it awakens within its own dream spell, but it must choose to do so. 
I love that. And, and again, I'll just pick a couple of points from what you said earlier, which I highly resonated with. Um, I mean, I'm resonating with everything you're saying, but just wanted to pick two points. I have seen, or we have seen in our lifetimes, other governments fall, like, you know, the USSR and the other, other things we've seen, no matter how mighty, no matter how much they think they're incredible, they've come down. Now, I know that they still come down and probably get replaced by the same system, but we have hope that with this dissolution, with this this removal of this rotten system, perhaps it's the end of it, and and a natural system can take place, uh, one that doesn't do yeah. everything that you've just described. Yes. So to, just to go back a few minutes, um, when people realize that their farm, their home, their their land, uh, their children, their cars their everything is that's registered is owned by the queen of england essentially who is the owner of the commonwealth in that sense all the deeds and bonds uh, fall back into her uh, enclosure of the crown of england okay mm -hmm. and and she's of course the placeholder for that or the, the, the she's the figurehead for that so that's the fact of the matter is that the queen elizabeth ii owns your home now if you're happy with that and for the first nation peoples uh, she came in and she is an illegal unlawful occupying force uh, of your land okay the tribal trust lands which means to say the whole of australia every single square inch belongs to the first nation peoples the end underscore three times the end um, so it's all subversion it's all theft it's all um, occupying uh, force um, acting out of honor acting illicitly illegally immorally unethically and unlawfully that is the bottom line uh, but insofar as your own fiction reality uh, claims ownership of a piece of land or a farm or a house or a child or a bicycle or a motor car, well, you're just kidding yourself. But that's OK, because you expect it to die on cue at the age of 65 or 73 from a cancer, which has been engineered into your nutritional diet anyway, uh, courtesy of your friendly government and all of its compliance agencies that don't give a fuck about the fact that you're being killed with glyphosates, aluminum, fluoride and all the rest of the chemical toxins so that's all part of the orchestration of social engineering and cultural engineering designing your lives and your longevity for you as part of a demographic a soup that's the fact of the matter now when you realize when you bass uh, tadras realize that you can actually follow through with certain law forms and you can claim the elodium or the elodial title of your land um, and we teach you how to do that, incidentally, uh, New Earth University, our university. We teach people how to do that. We run courses with the world's leading experts on this. So you, we, we can teach you how to do that. When people of the world start to do that, then you see a natural dissolution and breakdown of the false enclosures, the false containment and ownership that is assumed by the crown and the state unlawfully again and illegally and immorally. So all of that is part of the revelation that's coming to light right now that is also why um, certain powers that be or powers that were have also been part of the orchestration of the systemic collapse of the world economy under cover of covid 19 corona that's all part of an orchestration so that the bankers can get out of jail free because they can all look back at the year 2020 and go, ah, that was a stealth, invisible virus that brought about calamity and catastrophic failure of the Ponzi scheme that we designed and we uh, uh, supervised for hundreds of years. The banking class, the so-called Illuminati, when you get up to that serpent uh, Draco class, they are absolutely um, uh, Illuminati in that sense. They are the illumined ones, the, the Luciferic ones, the ones that have, uh, that have been uh, the all-seeing eye in, in that sense, but it's all been a negative spin. And, and that game is about to fall anyway, Bass, with what is happening now in the United States. And that is why the global Associated Press, Associated News Networks um, are all conspiring right now to block out, boycott and deplatform and censor even the most powerful man on the face of the earth, Donald J. Trump, who only an hour and a half ago has been cut giving a live speech from the White House, from the Oval Office to the world, 
all the associated prime networks cut the feed at the same time. Well, that is the most extraordinary single event that has ever occurred in the history of media. Don't expect to hear about it. Why is that? Well, that's because the media are the ones that tell you the stories and they won't be telling you that story. But Donald Trump was deplatformed from the Oval Office a couple of hours ago for the first time in history, because they're saying that his claiming that the Biden and Democratic satanic element have have, have uh, stolen the, the election, which we know they have, because we know how they've done it, and because we also knew how they were going to do it since the midterm election in 2018. Let me quickly jump in and caveat and say, I am not a fan of the Republicans. I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I'm not a fan of politics. I despise all politicians and politics, okay? I only like living men like you. But I'm saying that either way, under the umbrella of politicking and politics USA, that is what's been going on. And we are at that, as I said earlier, that axiomatic time. This is epochal, what is happening. So black has become white, white has become black, truth has become fiction, fiction has become truth. Um, nobody knows who is who and what is what. That's called Helter Skelter. That is why the Freemasonic and Secret Society checkerboard is there, going back to Elizabethan England and even before. You've got that checkerboard, black and white, black and white, black and white. It's all part of the orchestration of Ordo Ab Chao, which is what you read on every US dollar bill. It is, uh, it is order out of chaos. First, you have to orchestrate the chaos. Then you have to bring about the order. So the governing class, the high echelon, uh, imperial class of, of Draco human hybrid are the ones who have generationally been doing the reset controlling the reset, controlling the reset, as you suggested, with what happened in the USSR. Yes, the fall of the wall in Berlin was all part of theater. Yes, the collapse of USSR was all part of theater. That was just a concession by Wall Street and the Zionists behind Wall Street, who had financed Karl Marx and Lenin and Stalin all the way through to Yeltsin until uh, Vladimir Putin. That was all controlled by the Zionist, uh, Imperial Zionist Wall Street echelon. They orchestrated the collapse of the Romanov dynasty and the imposition of communism into Russia. They then transferred that on to China through Mao and tried to communize and collectivize Russia, China, which they did very well. They tried to then franchise that on in the 60s and 70s and 80s to the rest of the world. It failed. So they defaulted back into a new form of capitalist communism, otherwise known as George Soros. So that kind of Fabianist agenda took on a new face of egalitarianism, libertarianism, the liberal intellectual class, okay, who are now pitted against Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin. I wonder why. That's because Putin and Trump represent the hard man uh, uh, protecting the pulse of middle America and middle Russia and reclaiming humanity from generational Sabbatean Zionist um, uh, practice. That's more or less what's going on on the playing field right now. And it's very important stuff. The outcome is assured. I can safely say that. I, I happen to know it. It's absolutely assured. It's a really good story that emerges through this. But every one of us have got a hero's journey along the way. And every single one of us, Bass, need to define who we are on that hero's journey to ourselves, not to the rest of the world. Forget Instagram. Forget American Idol. Forget winning the lottery. Forget, you know, impressing uh, your, 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 you know, your, your schoolmates or impressing uh, your, your family or your, your fraternity. It's all about relationship with you. And that is the atom seed of the regenesis of the Adam, the living sons and daughters of God, the reclamation of ourselves from this pit, this abyss of calamity and chaos that we find ourselves in in 2020, perfectly personified incidentally by a stealth virus that doesn't even exist in and of itself. Now, it does exist as a bioweapon. It does exist as a, a bacterial strain of corona, which has been with us for hundreds of millions of years. That all is real. And getting influenza is real every year and seasonal flu is real and all of that. But the orchestration of a pandemic is absolutely illicit. It didn't happen.
I've met the most powerful person in the world behind public health administration. That's not Anthony Fauci. Um, I, in, in terms of the, 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 from the intelligence perspective, I've had conversations in the last two years about the evil wickedness that is lying behind public health administration. So they're very good leadership in the Pentagon, in the White House, even in the CDC and the AMA and the FDA and the World Health Organization, who know full well what is going on. There are good people in Australian Parliament today who know full well. They just need to know that there are other voices of dissent and consensus coming from out there to help them do their job. Uh, and that's something very important. You're going to be greatly welcomed in, I believe, into the political fraternity because there's a lot of good people, sleepers in there waiting for folks like you to, bre to, breach, the, uh, uh, to breach the water and get in there. Thank you, Sash. Thank you for your blessings. And what I want to ask you about, it's something that I've started to work on within myself, as you rightfully say, that all the things that are happening, we're creating, we're allowing, we're giving permission. And I, I truly, in my heart, believe that, hence free will. Um, what is it that <laughs> we can do to start to own that the goodness in the world, which, which is our essence, of course that exists, but every ugly in the world has also been something that we've dreamt, that we've allowed, that we've accepted, that we've bought into, that we've signed up for. And, and the moment we can accept that, because it's a paradox, you want the light, you've got to own the dark. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. So, well, I mean, I'm in Bali, and in Bali, um, the culture um, ex acknowledges the devil. So at every temple and every temple ceremony, um, there's a place for the devil that's set. Even at the table, there's a place for the devil at any of these kind of, um, um, sort of ritualistic banquets. The priesthood acknowledge the fact that the devil exists. They don't try and flush him out. They say, well, rather we can be where we can see you. So they'll make a place for him at the table, literally serve food to him. The offerings that are given up, um, you know, millions of offerings every day, at the temples, every house has a temple and so on. All those offerings are to keep evil spirits at bay. In a sense, it's paying a small a small penance um inviting the jungle spirits and the angry jealous gods to please stay out of our business um it's very cute but it, it acknowledging the so-called shadow is an integral part of um, moving into so-called enlightenment but i think that enlightenment in and of itself truly comes about when one disentangles entirely from either the light or the dark either the good or the ill on that checkerboard recognizing that in the temporal sense it's all part of the same uh, dichotomy or as you say paradox playing out rather I will consciously actualize within self, within the Adam, move into coherence with my divine nature through my mindfulness, through my being very present in the living now and conducting only right action and pure truth in my life, moving my entire life and field of influence into increasing confluence with the divine immanent nature, which self exists and within uh, my blueprint. And, and my function, essentially, your function, our function as sons and daughters of God, so to speak, is to act as, as infinite capacitors of light and love and to anchor patterns of perfection into this imperfect world. And when we own that we were not born uh, to this world to be wage slaves, to work to some goddamn corporation in order to pay goddamn bills, in order to survive hand to mouth, uh, and hope we don't get penalized too badly along the way by this goddamn gormless construct called government. Well, <laughs> that is what we're born to, to affirm, to create, to expand, to surf bliss, to make love, to, to roam freely, to constantly, constantly create create and engender, embody and enact. There is so much to the symphony of life that we could and should be doing with all of our time and our God-given resources and limitless energy and intelligence. But we believe ourselves uh, limited and therefore we become limited. We believe ourselves enslaved and enclosed and therefore we manifest that outcome. Whatever we believe and ideate is what casts the plasma, the attention, the biophotons into the field, the holographic field that then fractates and becomes real when we put enough life force or prana or chi into that ideation. So if you now know that you are the progenitor, the alpha and the omega, 
the architect, the engineer of all that is on the holographic screen of your life, then how can you possibly imagine yourself to be a victim of anything? Perfect. You're not a victim of circumstance or of family or of history or of DNA or of anything. You are the Atman. You are the living avatar and you must step into that knowing and that being in order to just blow away the fiction. It doesn't exist in my life anymore. I don't look at clocks. I don't wear watches. I despise the TikTok tyranny of 1260 time signatures. I understand just like the First Nation peoples of Australia know about the evil and the witchery of clocks and of time. This is white man's poison. Okay? This is, this is the butchery that occurred in the dislocation of the relationship of living souls from a living planet by systems, by control mechanisms by invisible Babylonian priests. When you know that to be so, you release yourself from it. It's a spell. You uncast the spell through actualizing. The freedom it brings upon you instantly is palpable. And you then move into a state of affirmation and grace where your life becomes a canvas upon which you paint with your finest imaginings and dreams. That is what we are all born to do, not to be cloistered into our homes and tenement blocks, a quivering in fear at some twat called prime minister or president or Bill Gates or any of these godless archetypes that have somehow managed to manifest because we've permissioned them to manifest. Let us depermission them, reclaim the Atman and go forth and prosper. It really is that simple i totally agree and and it is so um and the interesting part from what you're saying there that whoever it is that they've manifested their prime minister president queen whatever it may be just shows up on their screen on tv it's not someone that comes to their house it's not someone that they meet and and greet and and shake hands with and actually connect with not even look them in the eyes. It's just some person on TV and it's, oh, quite often it's through the news telling them what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. And people fall sick before any virus has even entered their country just because they believed through their mind what's what's coming up on their news. I think... Oh, the- and because they wore a mask and they, they gave themselves bacterial, bacterial pneumonia. So, I mean, wearing a mask for longer than 40 minutes is self-harming. That's allowing the state to assault you and your children. That that's, that's, that's abuse. That's assault. So you do that for three months, six months, nine months. You've just, you've just docked uh, your immune system by 20, 30%, which means you're 20, 30% more likely to get a very serious influenza, which will lead to complications. It always does. And you debilitate yourself incrementally. The more you choose to follow the rogue dictates of government and mask yourself, No one in Australia should be wearing a mask. No one should be staying at home. Everyone should be uh, civilly disobeying. Civil disobedience should be the only duty of care of every Australian man and woman and child. You should all ignore the seditious and tyrannical treasonous edicts coming out of these morons uh, from, from from the local and the federal government. And you should be going about your business, reclaim your lives, your vocations, and to hell with the banks and to hell with the so called government government. When they commit treason, you have a constitutional right and duty of care to overthrow them. Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> I totally agree. And and once again, it's it's about that power of the mind and power of will, whether you buy into that whole system or whether you choose to go, you know what, I'm going to do what I feel like I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to go out and connect right. with nature. I'm going to go out and breathe fresh air and get some sunshine. And, and, and maybe also understanding the paradox that these devices do. They're great technology equipment, hence we can connect and see each other and speak to each other from across the other sides of the world. But they are also the greatest time stealers and the greatest distractions um, yeah. and, and make people so susceptible to the brainwash and to the, you know, to, to the mind fuckery. I think I've heard you describe it as yeah. before, so I'm going to use that term. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's more it's more serious than that. I mean, you paint an intelligent picture. It's more serious because the, the, the this thing, this thing, and I, I have a block there, but this thing is is um, is emitting um, Atlantean frequencies, uh, rogue frequency sets that are designed, in point of fact, uh, to bring about uh, psycho emotional, psycho intellectual dissonance. 
uh, in humans. The flicker rate of screens have been calibrated in order to create that disruption anyway and bring us into bewitchment and enchant our children into gaming, pornography, and obsession with, uh, with false light images coming from Hollywood and Disney and so on. So that's all part of the witchery and bewitchment um, protocols that have been written again into the, into the program. But the mutant frequency values that are coming out of uh, you know, 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G, all EMFs in point of fact, domestic uh, and high street EMFs are causing the cancers, causing the metastases in the cells, causing the mutations, um, causing the, the, the incoherence and the disruption of the true spin of atoms and thereby the true capacitance to bring and induct uh, life force. It's all about our capacity to transduce life force, solar flares, the light, the vibral light from the universe, the electrical universe constantly coming in. That's that's the field. So we are out of coherence with that at the physiological level. And therefore we start metastasizing and we start getting old and, you know, we go gray and and then and, and rheumatoid and then we get glaucoma and all these things afflict us. It's all connected to rogue and mutant frequency sets which issue uh, around us from depleted uranium from the times of the wars of Atlantis, which are still there in the in the atmosphere. They're still there. We've not remediated those. The fallen light of Atlantis is still uh, creating a firewall and entrapment in a sense. But then what we're doing also, or at least shall I say the emissaries of Yaldabaoth, the emissaries of the lower elemental astral intelligences of the, the, the devilish uh, um, archonic influences, they are all the emissaries are the 5G networks and the telecommunications networks and all of the insidious uh, wrong application of science that we see in the world today uh, and uh, knowing Listen, uh, uh, going into laboratories with government funds, um, uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of scientists and biologists and technicians have been doing this generationally, taking those bursaries and those grants and those funds and going into their laboratories and going against their conscience and going against the dictate of their soul covenant uh, more often than not and coming up with mutant molecules, mutant synthetic molecules, and then pumping those mutant molecules into the agrochemical industry, the pharmaceutical industry the entire food supply, the soil, the water, the air, everything is mutated through synthetic molecules which do not know how to spin in true orbit and thereby bring in true life force. So that's the state of dystopia and incoherence. It's more to do with mutant frequencies uh, than anything else. So remediating those frequencies with plasma shielding uh, and actualized consciousness, which creates a natural auric uh, field effect that blocks and then harmonizes those rogue forces, stops us becoming demonically possessed and instead ignites our genius and our capacity to affirm and create and expand. That's the true alchemy that's going on uh, in the biologically with humans and all living systems at the moment in the world. Brilliant. And I, I welcome more knowledge on that. This is why I'm so excited and lit up by the idea that you, you mentioned that we could do series to educate people along these lines. Um, I'm also very interested in sharing a link to the university that you described um, where, where some of these teachings are available. Because I think, I mean, this, this is information that could take people lifetimes to try and understand, comprehend, apply, embody, or it could take them a much shorter time if they were to consciously um, focus on it and, and expand their genius by 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 being exposed to this knowledge and this information and you yeah. know i think what an interesting game we play in australia where we go oh we want to save the environment so we ban plastic bags from shopping centers but meanwhile we still have fluoride in our water we still have the chemicals being sprayed we have all this craziness going on that affects us the the um the emissions through the emfs the you know yeah. 5g yeah and we haven't gotten rid of, and a lot of people don't understand the 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. They're still going while the 5G has been rolled out. Um, oh, it's all compounding. It's all getting worse and incrementally worse and worse and worse. That's why people are sick and and uh, Corona, COVID. Uh, are, are, there, there are there are connections there that people need to make for themselves and understand how the depleting of the uh, immune systems of all biological uh, systems in the world are being. Um, ransacked by by mutant frequency values yeah the last time that something like this happened on earth was about a hundred years ago and um, I think it was uh, Steiner 
that mentioned that what we have is not a because what was happening was a rollout of radio frequency on Earth through, you know, it's radar. It's radio, right? <laughs> radar, uh, radar, radar. Yes, radar and radio waves. Yeah. Right, and and he said what we have is a spiritual crisis, and the more people can connect within their spirit, this is why, you know, very early on in the conversation, what you mentioned completely resonated because it makes sense if if we're if we're looking for worldly solutions to to spiritual problems, we're, we're going to be shit out of luck. But we need yeah, to apply luck. spiritual yeah. solutions to worldly problems, um, and 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 not buy into. The, the well, that's absolutely right. And Bass, let me, whilst you're on Steiner, let's just quick, quickly talk about virus. There's no such thing as a virus. So virus actually doesn't exist. A virus technically is an exosome. It's something which is excreted from the cells because it's a poison that your body is responding to and your body is repelling it and it comes out of the body. So literally sub, 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 sub micron particulates are being excreted from biological systems, from living systems. They are constantly excreting and radiating outwardly these poisons, detoxing. It's a natural process of all biological life forms to, to see the threat within them caused by mutant frequencies and so on and to, to repel them as little discrete exosomes, little particulates. So we put those out. They've been wrongly tagged and tabulated as by wrong science, by bad science as being a virus that you can transmit and catch. No, you cannot. And you certainly cannot prevent uh, those things from getting through nappies on your face uh, when you choose to wear those absurd masks. That is all part of dominion and supremacy and witchcraft. So falling in for masking is you allowing witchcraft. And I'm not, again, using that language um, to be sensationalist. Again, I've been involved in international leadership at the highest level for over 21 years. Study my website, have a look. People accuse me of being an Illuminati scion and of crown agent and are involved with all of these Satanists because I've been doing that work. So idiot, moronic researchers are the ones that put these memes out that Sasha Stone is uh, one of them, one of the dark side. But that's because they're stupid, reductive morons and we have to allow for them. They're bottom feeders. They, they have a useful purpose. That's why I don't hit them too hard. I let them function. But for anyone who's after pure truth, um, look at these things with a circumspect intelligence. Look at Humanitad's work. See the diplomatic campaign that myself and my teams have been involved with over many, many years. We've got the conversations and the feedback from leadership. So it's not a them and us situation. There's good them and there's bad us as well. And that's the difficulty that we're trying to navigate right now is yeah. who, who are the goodies and who are the baddies. And again, you're not going to see that in a, in a, on a film or in a newspaper article or in a you know, National Geographic. You're going to have to work that shit out yourself, baby. And you're going to have to plug into your innate intuitive gut instinct, your psionic consciousness, your conscience needs to be activated. Your consciousness needs to become activated. Then you earn the stripes. Then you've earned the credentials to be able to navigate through chaos and to do so fearlessly with a great sense of, 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 of again, prosperity, abundance, affirmation, and joy, even at a time when we're being told that we're under the gravest existential threat we've ever faced. Bullshit to that. I absolutely agree. It's definitely, it's, there's no black plague. I haven't seen anybody being affected by this business of the virus. And actually, Sasha, to, to your point, the only known way of transferring a virus is to inject it into your body. It's the only yeah. known way because uh, other, other ways, they're, like you said, it's, it's dead cells that your body is naturally getting rid of. A bioweapon is different. So, so what is transmitting? What did happen in Wuhan, China, in Qom, Iran, in Milan, Italy, and in a couple of locations in the United States seven, eight, nine months ago, 10 months ago? What did happen? Well, a bioweapon was deployed by best accounts, probably canisters that were opened up by operatives in those locations in order to release a bioweapon strain into the atmosphere and bring about the so-called wet market scenario and bring about uh, a number of ghastly deaths deaths that were legitimate, that actually happened. 
people turning blue can't breathe but that's also connected to 5g deployment if you understand those locations and what was going on with early deployment of 5g which in and of itself renders you incapable of being able to take oxygen in this is a long technical story anyone wanting to learn more about that watch my film 5g apocalypse the extinction event which i believe is the number one film still in the world on 5g um it's being taken down constantly and tens of millions of people have seen it go and see it uh, we spent a long time researching and putting that film together and that gives you and i've got a very powerful people and very very knowledgeable academics on that film who is speaking to the truth of 5g so there's a direct correlation between that and so-called covid 19 breakout um, and then the implementation of a draconian globalist policy, which had been prepared through the United Nations and the Center for Disease Control, connected to also Imperial College in London and the spurious white paper that they put out at the beginning of this pandemic in order to trigger the panic and who's behind Imperial College and how that leads to Kinetic, which is contained by the Queen's Golden Share, which cannot be investigated by law. Why? Why not? That's because that Kinetic is what contains the bioweaponry, the patents and the rollout. So, you know, you've got all this insidious uh, devilishness in the back in the back story. And probably the queen doesn't even know about it, just, you know, to, to give, to cut her some slack. But the fact is that these highly compartmentalized um, uh, echelon of, of evil doers have been involved in trying to bring about catastrophic failure of the planetary social ecology and the planetary uh, economy and that is because they are seeking to bring about a mass culling depopulation event. Up to 85% of humanity have been circ circumscribed uh, for uh, early death syndrome in the next few years, certainly before the year 2030, which gives us 10 years. Now, that's real. And again, you're not hearing it from a crackerjack, uh, a long-haired fantasist. You're hearing it from a former director general in the IGO sector at the United Nations who's worked, uh, evidenced, um, my work amongst leadership for over 20 years. And I'm not tooting my horn. I am a living man who is desperately concerned about this living planet. And I don't uh, carry fear in my heart. I know what pure truth is, and I know what right action is, and I know that that becomes the living cross, so to speak, that we each of us must now bear, is to conduct right action and pure truth in our lives if we are to resurrect ourselves like Lazarus from the dead and enter the new earth. You're definitely representing the peace and holding that peace even during the times of chaos. And and I appreciate that. I appreciate your time and the work that you do. Um, there's definitely uh, more to come. I think that there needs to be more series about how people can connect within that discernment and within that... Uh, that core uh, essence of that integral part of us that needs to help us navigate our way through the chaos. Um, and, and, you know, different people will be doing it at different levels and at different stages and in different ways and different forms. But the idea is it's the only way we're going to be able to overcome what, what seems to be like a nightmare at the moment. Um, but at the same time, we can hold our peace. We can hold our grounds. Um, during this time and 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 like any nightmare you can choose to buy into it or you can choose to wake up um, i think that's probably the, <laughs> the best metaphor i can utilize at the moment yep very good i agree agree fully with that um it is a choice between um fear and the absence of fear i won't use the word love it's a it's a vastly abused uh, word but it's a choice now between fear or the absence of fear and i can tell you that fear looks like joseph biden with a mask on his face um <laughs> a career uh, by best accounts a, a peter vore uh, with a peter vore son a crackhead uh, involved in generational um uh, luciferic practice in the work that they do in this world um, the sheer criminal racketeering that's been exposed already. And that's coming to light in the coming days and weeks. Uh, we'll put um, that entire family uh, in, in Guantanamo Bay if they're lucky to survive at all. Um, but with them will come the or go the Obama, uh, Clinton, Bush, a Dulles crime cartel going back to 
till the assassination of uh, beloved uh, Kennedy in, in 63. And, um, and prior to that, also the fed formation of the Federal Reserve by the Illuminists um, in, in the early turn of last uh, century. And the revelations will come out about who orchestrated the Second World War, Vietnam War, all the wars that we've seen uh, in the last uh, uh, 2000 years, uh, all issue from the same source code of dysfunction, uh, dystopia, all of which themselves uh, are predicated on the source code of fear, tyranny, dominion. And that's what you and I as living uh, men need to um, recognize and then choose consciously to disentangle from this uh, fallacy of fear and from the myth of power as well. The one thing I learned over many years of dealing and interacting with uh, powerful people, some of whom I love greatly to this day, some of whom I think are insidious, venal, um, and nefarious and very sinister uh, entities, uh, partially or entirely uninsolved. Um, it's a confluence of all of these amazing uh, creatures and archetypes. This world is limitless uh, in, in what, it, what it presents to us in the holographic screen. But whatever it does present, we should apprehend that and uh, embrace that without any fear, without a shred or a trace of fear in our hearts. Least of all, fear for uh, a sadistic um, uh, perversity and abomination like your prime minister in Australia and like the, the governors of your districts, um, all of whom appear or many of whom appear to be in full collusion with the evil witchery of the central government, corporation government of Australia, which is operating in sedition and treason against the people um, and in cahoots with the central transnational bankers, the Crown of England, the Vatican and the Black Papacy. Um, so that's a choice now for all people listening to this. You don't need to fear your government. I don't fear any government on earth. I still get embraced and re receive at leadership level. Um, I'm, despite being radical in my views and saying things, it's because I speak to pure truth. I don't speak to things I don't know about. And I know that there's such good leaders out there that are prepared to have these conversations. Uh, and that's why I know we're on the brink of emancipation as a species because we're no longer conforming or comporting ourselves according to the old Edwardian Victorian um, mythos of, uh, you know, never speak to these things, you know, only, only follow the dictates of the establishment, you know, and all of that crap. It never served us. Um, let's start to serve ourselves uh, by dreaming wisely. Definitely well said. And, and it is time to claim that freedom that so many people give away so easily. Um, especially at this time, I've seen so many people give away their human rights, give away their freedom, uh, buy into that whole system with the masks and the lockdowns and all that business. And, and some just took it on the chin and said, oh, it is what it is. It's not what it is. You're allowed to be what it is um, or you don't. And so totally agree. And, and with regards to our prime minister, um, I don't know how he's our prime minister, to be honest. I don't know who voted for him. He seemed to have just come out out of nowhere. He's a placeholder. Bat. Let me say things that you're not allowed to say. Um, sure. He is a he is a venal um, placeholder. Um, he is a proxy of satanic and luciferic interests that have coursed their way through the Australian parliament um, and through the Australian um, political landscape um, and leadership uh, for generations generations uh, your government is is deeply embedded uh, with satanism and i'm talking about blood drinking satanism i'm talking about ritual satanic abuse and and um, um generational pedophilia as well the sodomy and the raping of children and the harvesting of life force all of these things we know to be so i speak to this day i speak to very high-ranking australian police um who are uh, contacting me and communicating um, intelligence to me and are very, very interested in having dialogues uh, with truth, truth sayers outside. They, they want help on the inside. So I'm, I work also with activists in Australia um, and I know many of the, the greatest, uh, Max uh, Egan, Paul Sales and Pete Evans. And uh, there's so many damn fine uh, activists in, in Australia. Um, uh, my, my dear friend uh, Nate as well. Um, I, I'm not worried about the outcome of where it's all going because I, I know that having characters like your um, incumbent prime minister um, is, is symptomatic 
and totemistic of the fact that we're able to see the devil now in full view. And I'm not suggesting that he's a devil. He's not smart enough. He's not cunning enough or canny enough to be a devil. Um, he's, he's a servant salamander class creature that is a proxy, a placeholder for the devil in your midst. Um, he's not in and of himself a dangerous character. He's a venal character. Um, he's an obscene abomination of a human being given uh, the dictates that come out of this creature. And he can deliver that with impunity. He can deliver it with such a, with such a modulated tone. That's pretty terrifying, terrifying stuff. Uh, but that is what he's bred for. So in a sense, if you were to aim a scalar, a soul frequency um, uh, technology uh, at him, you would probably find that he's in 100% alignment with his sole purpose. Happens to be also 100% in alignment with the destructivity or the destruction of the human family. Um, so that's what you guys, you Australians, have manifested by consensus into the field. Uh, in other words, you thoroughly deserve Dan the man. You thoroughly deserve Scott, Robin, whatever his name is, the, the premier. You, you, you deserve these archetypes. They, yeah. they, are, they are righteous uh, archetypes. They've, they've manifested uh, at your behest. Now know that and then whew, release yourself from that dream spell and see how quickly they disappear. They'll, they, will, they will melt like woodland gnats into the forest. You won't even know they existed. They'll leave no trail, not even a snail trail in the annals of true history. So don't worry yourself too much on that. But I say again, don't pay coin. Do not pay personal income taxes to a system which is committing sedition and treason. Do not do it. You have a duty of care. Uh, lawfully, you have a duty of care uh, to your ancestors. Uh, to the soil, to your God, and to your children, and to yourself. You have a duty of care to not breach your conscience and go along with anything with the, which offends your soul. Well, my legacy is to make sure that that knowledge is harnessed and shared with my children, uh, at the very least, my children, so that they can keep the legacy. So I definitely want to, as a man, as a father, as a husband, as a, as a person, to, to ensure that a new leadership comes in, um, not just in, in our country, but in our homes, so that people can practice living a natural life from a place of, of love um, and of clearing an absence of fear, which is, I think the fear is the gateway for the control um, yes. of, of, of all the things that we don't want in our lives. Um, and the more we clear that fear, the more people can live from it, from that heart space. Um, thank you for your time. I honor you and I appreciate you. And uh, I look forward to one day meeting you in Bali um, or you meeting me here in Perth, whichever way. Um, I think that would be brilliant. Thank you, brother. I'm very, very excited to watch the, the progress of your uh, political um, ambitions. Um, and I mean ambitions in, 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 in the honor, honor, honorable sense. Um, in much the same way that I, I, I wish my beloved friend uh, Ricardo Bossi tremendous success as well in challenging the status quo. I think uh, many of you are needed uh, to storm the Bastille and reclaim um, governance uh, and restore that and alchemize that into self-determination for the good people and my brothers and sisters of Australia. Um, love talking to you and thank you, Bass. God bless you. Thank you for your support and your time.